Okay, so the next um, part of this technical lecture, I'm going to go through uh, lighting, and um, there's two different types of lighting. Um, a daylight system that floods the entire scene with a um, with a really intense uh, spotlight, and then the second type um, it's a little bit more carefully considered. Uh, the technique will use a series of um, photometric lights that you can create under the um, create tab and they're more kind of point lights within a scene which might bring a particular focus to what you want to do. Uh, for the point of lighting I've made the scene a little bit more dynamic. Um, I've opened this other file of mine um, which has a series of uh, spheres. Now spheres probably a little bit better to actually uh, present lighting because there's you know there's more of a gradient to the objects and uh, some of the materials that I applied to this scene if I just open them up, uh, plastics, and you can see that the plastics have a have a glossiness to them um, natively, so there's a reflectivity to them. Um, and I didn't use even the ground I use as a plastic instead of the the flat wax that I used before. Okay. Um, as for the editing of some of the geometries within here, I'll just highlight say this sphere here. It might be another tool that you want to use. Um, I'll alt Q it and I'll go to perspective view and I'll turn on the edged faces. Under the modifier stack, uh, the sphere, uh, I've just put on two different modifiers. The sphere itself has 41 segments and I've done some rotating and I put this thing called an edit poly on. Okay. And we'll get into this in a few weeks, but the edit poly lets you grab particular vertice points and using the modifier, the uh, move, rotate, and you know, the scale tools, we can actually um, edit areas of the, of the object. Um, and then afterwards, the more you kind of edit it, the more faceted it usually starts to become. And there's a little modifier called Turbo Smooth, which kind of remeshes it and makes it smoother. And you can actually change the iterations there to actually add more and more mesh. Okay, so I just, I just thought I'd highlight that. And um, I did the same thing with the base plate this time. I'll cue it. This is actually just a ground plane with uh, a limited number of um, faces. I might just change the color so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see the native color of those lines. Uh, so in its um, normal form, there's a limited number of uh, vertice points. Using an edit mesh this time, I've dragged up some of those and then I applied a turbo smooth to it to make it smooth. And I put a camera on that kind of looks up into the sky at these balls falling. All right? And I composed the shot from the perspective as well. All right? So commonly, you kind of, you know, there's a tendency to design from, say, a plan, but you'll always interact with the space um, perspectively. Um, so it's nice to be able to design a, a space in that way, I think. Um, okay, so let's just render that and see it without any, any lighting. All right, so we are getting some of the glossiness, some of the reflection off these objects uh, with the default lighting in the scene. Uh, what I'll do though is I'll actually start to control that more by adding a daylight system. Okay, so this is the first type of lighting that I'll show you. So we go over to the Create panel. Over on the very end, there's a thing called Systems. And one of the object types is called Daylight. Stay away from Sunlight for now. So I click that, and I want you guys just to, when you do it, just to say yes to all the changes that they recommend. The first being to do with the uh, exposure value of the environment or how you see the environment through the camera. Um, the higher that is, uh, the less light is let through the camera or wherever you hit render from. Okay, it's kind of like the aperture on a SLR camera uh, controls how much light is filtered into the rendering engine. Um, so I'll hit yes, and there's a series of um, commands to actually create the daylight system. You can't just click and it'll create. The first one is a click and a hold of the mouse to create what's called the compass rose. Okay, and I'm just doing it in top view. Then I release that, 
and you'll see that um, we have another pop-up uh, which is to do with the environment or the background and it's recommending that we use what's packaged with the daylight system which is just a physical um, uh, like a, inter a, a background that appears like a physical sky and we'll say yes to that and I haven't clicked anything here after yes I'm just scrolling my mouse and I set the height of this sun system I click yes again or I click my mouse my left button and I'm finished with that command now so I right click okay and that finishes the command now what I'm just going to do is go to camera and I'll hit render and you'll see that we're now starting to get shadows falling on this surface we're also getting uh, the reflection of the sun system on these glossy bits and we're also getting our ground plane which was just a little rectangle, that thing there, starting to reflect into the sphere. And they're getting slightly deformed within some of these more complex geometries. All right, so that's just as its native uh, render. There's some of these pr parameters which I, I strongly suggest you actually learn what they are by um, searching for their names in the help menu, um, such as final gather. And uh, you can increase the precision of the shadows and the precision of all the edges of objects and how they're rendered using some of these parameters. Okay, so usually I'll, I'll take up the bounces a couple of times. I'll also take my final gather up. I won't take it too high because um, if I do that, then my rendering times are going to increase. And as far as precision, I just start to take up that to at least minimum one, maximum 16. It's to do with how many samples are taken from the scene. And if I hit render again, you probably won't notice it, but it does become a lot clearer, a lot crisper. You can see my rendering times have increased. And, you know, our edges are actually a lot more refined for these bits of geometry. Okay, so just know that that exists. Stay at the defaults. If you're just working within the scene, stay at a default. And to see differences, don't forget that we've got the region render option where we can drag an, an area of the render and hit it. Okay. Um, beyond that, if we wanted to change that exposure control, I've got area to render so you can see the difference in this next operation. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this little environment and effects dialog. Okay, and that will open up uh, the environment, which is the background and the actual um, the space that's not the objects. Um, it'll open up the controls for for um, the settings of the environment, I guess. Um, by default, when we created the daylight system, it switched this thing on called photographic exposure control. And there's a little option that lets you render a little preview. Um, you can also access this not only from that little button, but by hitting 8 on the keyboard. And you can see at the moment, it's just dark, and it, it doesn't render this little preview with that environment in mind. But we can decrease that setting to let more light into the scene. If I hit render again, you'll see the difference. So that's at a value of 13, and this one's at a value of 15. So I might come up somewhere between, use 14. All right. Uh, we can then control the image a little bit more by turning up the highlights, um, potentially turning down the midtones, and increasing some of the shadow a little bit. Like so. All right. So know that those controls exist. As for the background of the scene, um, if you're not happy with that, that blue sky, you want a different colour, you want to go back to the original black, we just turn off this little um, checkbox of use map, and now you can render the scene with that black background, and it still uses the daylight system. Okay? And you, know, you could actually change it to any colour and render it. Or you could use another map of a different sky if you're, if you're not happy with that one. Or you can render it as white. Like so. Okay, so that actually looks quite nice too. But for this exercise, I'll just keep it as the, um, this, the sky simulation. And what I want to show you is a few more parameters to do with this daylight system. If I just um, hit P for perspective, I'm just going to navigate out of my camera view 
which is facing up into the air and I'm going to render from just standing back a little bit so you can see the full effects of the environment uh, the environment background I've just changed uh, area to render off up here and I'll go nice and low like so and I'll hit render you can see that the background here is um, it, it forms a horizon line and this comes packaged with the daylight system paints the ground a particular color and it will blur into a blue all right now all those settings you can control within the parameters of the daylight system when you've got it actually highlighted and you go over to the modify tab all right so the ground color we can change and we can change the height of the horizon I'm just going to test it I don't know if it's going to work let's have a go this usually it's um, difficult to set the sensitivities because there's no slider value everything is relative as far as setting levels for these things so I'll hit render and you can see um, whoops I rendered the wrong window um, so I'll just move that region over for the bottom one hit render again you can see that we've now dropped the horizon until it's off the screen and I'll bring that back up to say negative uh, well, let's say negative one just so you can see it you know so you're actually setting the horizon line in the scene okay uh, further things you can play with within these this modifier stack are one that's a really good one to use is the softness of the shadows now if I hit render as the just kind of the default render I'll just render a little sliver of it actually no I'll render the whole scene what I'm going to do is I'm going to soften the edge of this shadow of the, the balloon okay to do that I'll bump up this value by a factor of 10 and when I do that I also have to change the amount of samples that you use to create the shadow otherwise you get kind of a dotty appearance I'll change that to 80 and I'll hit render and hopefully you'll see a difference yeah so now you can see that there's kind of a nice softness to that shadow and you could increase that until the shadow dissipates I guess and lastly what we want to do is just um, what I want to do is to show you that you can actually change the position of this depending on where you are in the world so up the top of the stack I've just select, I've got my daylight selected still I'm on the modifier tab and there's a button called setup here I can set the time of day so I can set it way into the evening I can change the time of year and I can also change the location based on the get location button all right I can also move the north direction which I don't know if it's going to be too clear on your screens there's a north point that's somewhere up there it's kind of come in really really big and we can rotate that around as well so you've got a fair amount of control of this Sun system all right and the lighting scenario changes accordingly all right so now the Sun's kind of coming from the left the position of all the glossy points has changed and it's probably now a little bit overexposed here so I would probably change this as well to a 14.5 the exposure control just to soften up how intense that is okay so you've got to you got to jump between these things okay you can either go with the defaults and you do get quite a nice image um, but ultimately whoops you want to have control of the environment and the effects uh, and how much exposure is in the scene and you want to be able to control what time of day and whereabouts you're casting shadows from.